Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard, season one, episode three, entitled The End is the Beginning. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I'll do an entire recap of the entire episode, scene by scene, with pictures offset to the side, and I give my reviews in the comments. That's all coming up next. is Bunny. Opening scene takes us back to Starfleet 14 years ago. We see Ralphie waiting outside and Picard walks out with a disgruntled look on his face. And Ralphie goes into, hey, did you tell him about the ships? Did you let him know what we're interested in and everything that we need? And he lets her know everything you predicted about requesting those ships, it happened. They're not happening. And she says, okay, well, we have reserved officers that are willing to help. Why don't we just bring them in? And Picard lets her know that they said that we could have those officers, but if we had them, it would be at a very low amount. Ralphie suggests, well, instead of worrying about manpower, let's just get synthetics to help us with that. Picard says, you know, synthetics are officially banned by the Federation. There's nothing that we can do. They are banned. And also all of the research that has anything to do with synthetics. Ralphie thinks that's really strange. Like, Picard, don't you realize that there's something going on? Synthetics just don't wake up and decide to go rogue and do something this terrible. It's got to be the Romulan. Romulan have got to be involved. We've got to have this fire to get up and to find out what we can do to help and to really research something is going on and Picard pauses and Ralphie says what happened in there what did they say to you Picard reiterates that the Federation they showed this fear and not wanting to help and I just don't understand that this is not what we represent and Ralphie says no it's not what we represent and I can't believe that they've done that tells her that yes, something has to be done. And I understand that, but without the help of the Federation, it's pretty much impossible to complete this mission. I was so upset, I was so frustrated that I just gave my resignation. And when I gave my resignation, there wasn't even any resistance and they accepted my resignation. Ralphie is clearly upset and conflicted in the decision that he's made because it seems like he's just given up without a good fight. She hears a beep, she receives a message and she says, wow, I got a message that they wanna speak with me. You tenderly give your resignation and wow, they're gonna fire me. She walks off clearly upset and Picard sinks his head with confusion and doubt that, wow, should I have even done that? After the opening intro to the show, we go to the Vasquez Rocks where Ralphie is. And after Picard gives her all of the information about what's happened and why he needs a crew and why he needs a ship, she tells him, you know, that's really interesting, everything that's happening, but you have some nerve. And I'm pretty sure that Kirsten told you the same thing. But a little tip, when you have all of this information, don't share it with Starfleet. Don't just purge and give all of the information that you know, and not even that, what you plan on doing. That wasn't really wise of you to do that, Picard. I'm just so upset with you. Picard tells her, you have every right to be upset. She says, no, 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 no. After all of these years, after everything is happening, I've noticed that you've changed the energy of who you are. I saw the interview that you gave, how you kind of sat back and, and, and just kind of tried to give this little polite explanation of everything that happened instead of being the Picard that we all know, having the straightened back and giving the information and what you felt and how the actions that you did how they were validated and why they were validated. That's not the person that I saw on the interview, just taking the bait of the interviewer and falling into that trap. And we see Picard have this look of embarrassment, like, wow, you know, you're right. She tells him, not only did I see the interview, but you were living very well. You were on your vineyard. You had nice furniture, but look where I am. Look at how I'm living. 
I didn't have anything after they let me go. I would give you a tour of my premises and what I have, but it would be nothing but embarrassment. And she is on the verge of tears from frustration and anger. And she tells him to leave and to stop telling her information and trying to get her involved because she's just too hurt and she's just too saddened by everything that's happened and not thinking of how his decision would affect others and especially her. And the number one thing that hurt her was that after all of that, you just went ghost. I know there are several chain chains of command and processes to communicate with one another, but you didn't even call on a human level to say hi, to say hello, and to see if I was okay. And she continues to tear up and she walks off. And she doesn't even wanna be around Picard to even speak with him any longer. Back at the Romulan Cube, we see a gentleman looking at the playback footage of when Soji gave soothing words to the dead and he sees that enduring presence. And he goes to her and he says, well, hello, I just noticed that everything that you've done here, all of the research, all of your works, it's just really, really excellent. The EXPs, they see us as things that need to be warehoused or as property. And Romulan see us as both, but it's something about you, you're different. And I thank you for that. And Soji takes those compliments and says, thank you. With all of that, he decides to give her clearance to interview Ramda, but he wants to know why. Soji asked if he knows anything about her before she was assimilated and that Rhonda, she wrote several books about ancient myth, history and information. And he seems thrown back a little about like, wow, like how did you even know that information? She says, well, for some reason, when I ask for information, I'm really convincing and they just give it to me. And he lets her know that's not the experience that I have, but it's great that you're able to get all of that information. He's like, look, with everything I've decided after your constant requests, I'll give you 30 minutes to interview her. Picard apologizes to Ralphie and tells her she has every right once again to be upset. He did what he thought was right and he apologizes that she's had such a negative experience with the aftermath of everything that happened. Right now, he was so focused on getting a crew, getting a ship, not thinking of her hurt and her feelings and that he apologized and that she was always right in suggesting that Romulan had something to do with correlations and talkings with the Federation. And she says, Picard, that was pertaining to the incident that happened on Mars. Anything else, there's, there's not any thing that's giving me proof that afterwards that that was true. I just can't be involved with any of this. She's too hurt. She's too saddened. There's nothing I can do. I cannot go on this mission with you. I don't even want to hear about it. Picard accepts her statement, accepts her, accepts her statement, continues to walk off to leave. And she says, Hey, I got somebody that has a ship. His name is Rios. And you'll be hearing from them soon. And she gives that confirmation that, look, I helped. Here you go. Other than that, don't include me. Don't want to have anything to do with it. We then see the next shot bringing us to Daystrom Institute. And we see Agnes enjoying her lunch, listening to classical music, and enjoying the view. That is quickly interrupted by Commodore O. She approaches her and says, well, hello, I'm Commodore O. Oh, and I am the director of Starfleet Security. I want to know about your interactions and speakings with Picard. And Agnes is taken back and says, okay. We learned that the gentleman that spoke with Soji is the executive director of a particular unit and he requests to speak with the patient for a 2-2 two -two stroke 2 and that he has permission to go in. Security lets him in and Soji recognizes that Everyone that's there is not only assimilated, but disoriented and they're Romulan. She walks around and she finds this very interesting. They see Rhonda and she's sitting down looking at a puzzle. Card gives a brief call to Ralphie and says, you're doing the research, aren't you? 
And Ralphie gives that look of just oh, this guy and says, no. Picard sees right through that and says, okay, well, I'm sending you all of the information that Daystrom had on Bruce Maddox. Carry on. Picard decides to take a visit to Captain Rios, and when he arrives, he sees a very quaint, well-dressed gentleman, and he says, oh, Captain Rios, I need it to, and, and the hologram says, oh, no, 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 no. Rios is in the other room, and he escorts him to the other room. He sees that he's wounded, he's drinking, he looks like he just got in the fight of a lifetime, and he says, um, Captain Rios, I'm, and he says, I, I know who you are. I got that call from Ralphie and she informed me of who you were. And as he's getting medical treatment from the hologrammed image that looks like himself, Picard really doesn't like the fact that he's drinking and he's just kind of out of uniform and laying around and just not really as quaint as the hologram. And he tells Picard, you know, sit so we can talk. I feel comfortable with you because if Ralphie can vouch for you, there's no reason to argue with her. Picard sits down and he continues to observe Rios and he says, I'm looking around and this ship is very well put together. It's up to cold. This just breathes Starfleet. And Rios tells him, look, you either hire me or you don't. Don't try to give me this speech that Ralphie warned me, warned me about. You either do or you don't. Rios tells Picard that he could care less about anything that had to do with him and the Federation. He just wants to know the mission. What are you trying to do and where are we going? While Ralphie does her research, she notices that there's cryptic algorithms, that there is quantum fingerprinting. So she knows something isn't right and something tried to be hidden in these files about Bruce. As she continues to get deeper into her research, she's interrupted very annoyingly by a game advertisement. Rio's hologram gives him an update about the ship and says, oh, everything's ready to roll and looks fine and we're ready to go on the next mission. Oh, wow. Admiral Picard, all of the things he's seen, all of the places that he's gone, and all of the people that he worked with, he's just egging it on like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that Picard had the audacity to see us. We should be honored. And Rios tells him, this is all great, and I know that you're excited about it, but the hologram says, no, 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 you've always want to work, wanted to work with someone with such, such prestige. He's pretty much an angel, very stand right and upright with everything that he does. And Rios cuts him off and says, look, it's been 10 years since the last time that I helped out somebody just like that. And I am still dealing with the aftermath of that and seeing that person's brains and blood splattered everywhere. And he says, you know what? I don't have anything else that I need from you. And he commands that the hologram goes away. And you can tell that he's deep in thought, saddened, but intrigued by going on another mission. And he lays back and he looks into the stars. And as he gives that gaze, we go back to the Picard vineyard and he himself, Picard, is looking into the stars. And he gives that breath of thinking of all of his missions and his life. And Laura says, you know, I'm really not too keen about you doing anything or leaving. Picard lets her know that I've tried so hard to belong to the chateau. And even though no matter how hard I try, I just always feel like I don't belong. And Laura says, well, yeah, you always did have an eye for the stars. OG and the gentleman continue to watch Rhonda do this puzzle. And he says, well, you know that door, the symbol of the door. She says, oh, yes, 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 I know. In Romulan culture, this is symbolism of a front door, but they know that in order to get into the home, you always go through the back. And the gentleman is just really surprised that Soji knows all of this. And she says to Rhonda in her native tongue, if certain people requested to come through that door, would you allow access? 
Jovan joins Loris and Picard on the balcony and has a bag full of goodies and food and is kind of giving the nudge and happily saying, these are things that you can take with you on your journey. And they're sharing a moment. And as they're sharing that moment, it's quickly ended by intruders that are attacking the home. And Jovan and Loris have no hesitation in helping to protect Picard. And Picard is a little rusty and he's taking cover underneath a desk and slowly gets into the fight and he gives it a good whirl and he is trying his best to defend himself as well. Gladly they are able to defend themselves and take on all of the intruders. They've got all of their weapons and they're hugging each other in relief that they're all okay. There's one more intruder that comes in and they seem defeated and as they're about to defend themselves luckily the intruder is shot and we see Agnes and they're looking at her not only surprised that she's there but the fact that she helped them take down this recruiter it's very obvious that Agnes is very shaken and, and she's starting to look around like I can't believe that I've just hurt someone but she puts the weapon down and Picard joins her on the couch and she's very shaken and he says, it's okay. I, I know that was different, but thank you. Thank you for helping. Thank you for protecting us. She says, I, I, I know you're surprised that I'm here, but Commodore O, oh, she visited me and, and she asked me all these questions about you and I'm sorry, I just had to tell her what I knew, but I didn't tell her everything. And Picard said, it's okay. She says, no, 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 I'm, I'm just terrible at lying. And I had to tell her, he says, no, no, it's okay. It's all right. We're gonna talk about everything. We just gotta get this Romulan. So they take the Romulan intruder and he's knocked out, but they kind of have him to the side where they can keep a close eye on him and what's going on. As he's out, the next set of scenes simultaneously go back and forth to Soji's place, placement and Picard. Soji, she continues to talk to Ramda and she says, these symbols, all of these symbol, symbols that you show on this puzzle, on this table, do they represent mythology, history? And Ramda says, no, mythology. That's not the word, it's news, news. And so she says, wow, that's, that's interesting that you call it news. This is the information that I need that somehow, some way there's, there's a communication of events that happen and things that happen. And it's not a mythology, it's news. It's taken as something to share. Wow, that's really interesting. Flipping back to the Picard area, the Romulan is slowly coming to and Picard says, hey, we need to talk. Flipping back to Soji, Soji says, so with this information, is there anything you can share? And Ramda looks up at Soji and she appears to be teary-eyed and says, I know you, I know you from tomorrow. Picard is talking to the Romulan and says, hey, if you tell us what we need to know, we will set you free. We will let you go and we won't cause you any harm. And the Romulan says that you'll never get any information and we'll get to her before you do. We're going to make sure that she's captured and you have no idea what she is. Ramda continues to go on about how she knows Soji and that what is she and does she know who she is? Soji is clearly confused and saying that I've never met you. I don't know who you are. She says, yes. What sister are you? Are you the sister that is alive or are you the sister that is dead? Picard continue, continues to antagonize the Romulan that they have captured. They begin to tussle and they begin to fight. And as they're doing that, the Romulan spits out that fluid that we saw in episode one. It gets on Jaban, but gladly Jaban is able to get off the jacket and Picard throws it to the ground. And unfortunately, they can't continue to interrogate the Romulan because not only is the jacket destroyed, but now he is de destroyed by the fluid that he's been able to release. Now we have Soji and Ramna going back and forth. And she says, no, you are 
the destroyer. You are the one that has come back. I know who you are. I know who you are. And she continues to reiterate that Soji is confused. The gentleman is confused about how not only does Soji know all of this information, this secretive information about Romulan, but what has just happened? Security diffuses the situation. Everybody's shaken. But what's interesting is that the Romulan that have been assimilated in the room, they turn to Soji as if they're slowly getting some understanding of who she is and memories. And they look like they have a lot of anger towards her. So that is the Easter egg drop that we have to take with us for the rest of the season. Soji, after a very confusing, conflicting moment, she goes back to her room to relax and give a call to her mother. She calls her mom and says, Mom, have you talked with Daj? Do you know where she is? Is she okay? And the mother says, yes, I just spoke to Daj. She's just fine. As a matter of fact, she said that she wants to get a puppy. And you know that when your sister sets her eyes on something special, she's going to do it. And as the mother continues to speak, we see that Soji, she feels disoriented and she's sort of just in this fog and she's so overwhelmed, overwhelmed that she appears to faint. Soji, after a period of time, she comes to and as she comes to, she notices that mysteriously Narek is at her door and enters her room and he asked her if she's okay and she's just like yeah i i don't know i i've come to and, and an hour ago you could have asked me about certain aspects of romulan history and i couldn't tell you anyway or anything but for some reason, some way, somehow, I'm able to tap into all of this Romulan information and I know it as if it's just a history book in my head. I don't know what's going on. Narek sees this opportunity to kind of soothe her emotion and he leans over to her and says, I have a, a secret. I think I'm falling in love with you. And he soothes her emotions. And as he does that, he leaves the room and we see that there's a hologram of Rizzo and she is back in her Romulan true form. She's no longer in disguise as Vulcan. And he says, I'm happy to see you back as your true self. And she wants updates on any information that he has. And he tells her that in her state, I really don't know if she realizes what's going on and certain memories that she has. She doesn't know what she is. And I think we need to keep it that way. And Rizzo agrees and tells him that I guess I'll be seeing you later for more updates and more information. Card asks Agnes, you spoke with Commodore o, o and you mentioned that you told her everything except one thing, what was that? And Agnes said, I told her everything, but I wanted to come with you on this mission and look for this other girl. I'm, I've been a scientist forever and I've done research about certain things and now it's time for me to see it. I have this opportunity to go and to not only be in the moment, but to learn more information about synthetics, about this mission. Why is it all of a sudden this interest of Commodore O? I must go with you. It's something that I just can't dismiss and can't pass up on. We see that Picard and Agnes, they join Rios on the ship. And delightedly, we see Ralphie. She's suited up and ready to roll. And Picard is very excited to see her and says, Ralphie? She says, yeah, I'm here. And also I found Bruce Maddox um, and he's on free cloud. And Picard says, free cloud, I should have known. And she observes Agnes and says, well, who is this? And she doesn't understand why this young probably newbie is on this ship. And she says, Picard, you've brought this person here on this secret mission that we are about to do. She's not too happy about that. And Picard settles the score and says, Dr. Girardi is very knowledgeable and is one of the best researchers when it comes to synthetics. And Ralphie takes that as 
kind of a little badge of honor and that he welcomes her onto the ship. They all take their positions. They get comfortable. Picard looks out to the stars. Rios gives a look at the crew and to Picard as if giving visually the hint of we're ready when you are. He looks at Picard and gladly Picard looks out and says, engage. Woo! And that is the end of the episode. I was like, let's go. Let's go. It's nothing like that. Engage from Picard. Let's get it. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I loved it. It got me going and I'm so excited for episode four. Four. Let me know what you think. Let me know of your reactions to everything in this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E, and look for my reviews in the comments. I'll see you next time. Make sure to check out other movies and television show reviews in the playlist. Until next time, I'll see ya. Bye. <laughs>